Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance. I am Becky and I am super excited to be joined by Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Becky. Um, and Heather's here. Hi, Heather. Hello, Becky. Um, so this is our long awaited, people have been asking for a long time for us to do an episode about signings. Mm -hmm. Um, but we needed to wait till we actually went to some. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Helpful. It, it's helpful if you know what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jenny and I are just returning from our weekend at the Reader on the River conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, at the time of this recording, we've been back for two days. Jenny, are you rested? No. no. See, I'm too <laughs> old for not. travel. <laughs> I could not stay awake at all yesterday. Oh my gosh. And then Heather has gone to some other signings that we have not mm -hmm. gone to. Um, and then we also have some input from podcast contributor, Rachel. She shared some thoughts about signings that she's attended. Um, and so we're just going to get into this. Mm -hmm. I don't know that this is going to make any sense to anybody who hasn't attended a signing or isn't even thinking about attending a signing. Um, but we're going to talk about it, right? Yeah. Yes, for sure. So on this episode of Buzzing About Romance, we're going to talk about book signings, some of our experiences, what we like and don't like about them, some of our must-have items, and things to think about like pre-orders, book signing versus a convention event, and then mm -hmm. bookstore signings, because Jenny and I have actually attended more bookstore signings than we have big conventions or signings. Um. Okay, so let's first just break down when we say a signing, what do we mean? What is a book signing versus what is a convention or a con? I think I think about a book signing where there's a bunch of authors and it might be like a one or two day event, but they have kind of events along with it with authors and readers um, so I think that's because that's your experience in Vegas. Yeah. But to be honest, the signings are basically craft fairs for, for authors, for book authors. It can be one or two yeah. days, but the main purpose, the main purchasing of your ticket is going to be just about getting books signed. Yeah. It's not going to have panels. It's not going to have... It might have a cocktail party before, or it might have an after party after, but the main focus with your general admission ticket is coming in, getting in line, and seeing the authors you want to see. Yeah, so Vegas did not, I don't think they had panels. Mm -mm. Um, oral fixation was there and did um, like a, I don't know. But they did a party, right? Like they had a cocktail gathering or a meet there and There was greet. that too. But on Sunday they had where um, I think Aaron. Oh, that Mallon was through. Had... That was Aaron Mallon's thing. That wasn't oral fixation. Yeah. That was just her oh. live reading of if these walls could talk. Yeah. And I know that the live reading, you could buy tickets for online and that didn't go as well. Yeah. But my husband and I were there in person and Shane East was there and he was reading and I was like oh my god Shane East Shane East and he was like I don't get it like he's yeah he's good looking and then Shane opened his mouth and my husband leans in and he's like I get it I get it I could listen to this man and I don't even like like he's like I like men but not like that but wow this guy's voice so in talking to a couple of authors this weekend many feel that the signings that the whole purpose is simply just basically a giant open room with tables and you're coming to get the books and to have the book signed and maybe some picture ops, but there's not going to be panels. It's not going to be about community. You know, um, there might be additional events like different groups, like oral fixation or, you know, when we go to Indianapolis, buzzing about romance is going to have a small event for our listeners. Um, but it's not about like community building overall. I think that's something you need to like <clears throat> be aware of what event you're going to and what side events are planned by other parties outside, like whoever's running the main attraction. Yeah. Cause Jenny, I and... go ahead. I think it's kind of what you make of it too. So like, 
I went to Vegas and Vegas was so like, I feel like I had tickets forever. So I had the opportunity to find out who else was going to be there. And then we kind of just set up our own thing and like found our own people, which was fun. Cause like I, I live in Minnesota, Rach lives in Ohio. So for Rach and I, like it was, you know, you see somebody that you don't, you, I'm, I like text her every day and then I finally get to see her and we're like, oh my God. And our husbands are like, these two are so weird. <laughs> no, I agree. I do think it is who, what you make it. Um, the mm-hmm. signings, they can be more. So Jenny and I went to Columbus to the Beyond the Readers event in Columbus. We only had general admission tickets and we only drove in for the day. We didn't stay overnight. Um, and we'll, and we didn't have tickets for the after party after, um, and it was very transactional and we knew the authors that were going to be there. And we had reached out to a couple people that follow the podcast that we knew were going to be there, but there wasn't really, the venue wasn't very nice and it wasn't, and people were simply there to get the books they wanted from the authors they wanted and they were out. Nobody was really like hanging around, socializing and chatting, it, at least not during the signing time on Saturday. Um, yeah. It was like a shopping excursion. You know, like we have them here locally, you know, where like there's a craft show and you go in and it's a day trip with you and a friend and it's just a shopping excursion. And that's what Columbus felt like, because even as you came up to authors tables, they didn't want to talk about their books. They just wanted to know which one you were buying or what you wanted signed so you could move on. Right. I think I described it as like an amusement park. Like you're waiting in line at an amusement park. You get your, like, you get to the front of the line, you get your 30 seconds and it's over. Yeah. So I have a feeling that it depends. Like I think about, um, I did Vegas. I did Love in Vegas 22 and then um, there's a local, it's called North Iowa Bush, Book Bash. That's about two and a half hour drive from me in the Twin Cities. Um, and I think some of like, I want some of the bigger, like I think about like um, some of the lines got to be like a little crazy, but like Catherine Cowles was in um, Vegas and she was like, oh my God, it's my job. and she, I never ever felt like with her it was a transaction. The same with like, I met Riley Edwards and she was exactly the same. Like, oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. We, you know what I mean? It didn't, but there were a couple where I was like very transactional. Yeah. I do think author personality plays. Some authors do better in these events. Um, Mm -hmm. I had an issue at Readers on the River. Um, Only one author was very, um, I don't think she wanted to be there. Yeah. She was not kind she was not engaging. She did not greet us when we walked up to their table. Her PA was on their phone. Like, it was really, it was fucking it awkward. Was kind of, yeah, it was kind of like a suffer through this. Is this over yet? Yeah. yeah. And that same author was in some panels, and she never smiled. She didn't seem excited to answer the questions. Like, it was really weird. Like, okay. we don't know why you're here. Yeah. Um, but so when we say we're going to a con... Or a convention. So Readers on the River was a convention versus just a signing. Mm -hmm. Because we had like, it's kind of like a business convention, like an educational workshop. Mm -hmm. We had, um, so when you go to a convention, you would expect to have a keynote. You know, Mm -hmm. some kind of meet and greet cocktail hour or d'oeuvres. Even if it's, you know, a cash bar, it would be something that would be community engaging, maybe not building, but engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and, and I think a con and a workshop like that's going to be multiple days, one to two days. Yeah. I think that sounds like super interesting, honestly, maybe because I'm such a nerd, like I would be interested in like the process or, you know, learning more about it. Yeah. And then there, there were panels, um, and then a luncheon and then the signing. The signing was like the least important thing of that entire convention for readers on the river. Right. And by that time, you have like at least connected with like one or two people, right? You've made a friend group per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
You make a friend group and then you just drink and drink and drink if you're us. And then, um, like, <laughs> yeah, and so I think too, um, like Vegas. So obviously, I flew, we flew into Vegas and we stayed at the hotel. Um, and I was like, I told my husband, I'm doing this, like, I'm gonna nerd out. So, like, I wore book shirts, like, I was that nerd. And so, like, everyone's like, oh my God, are you here? And my husband's like, what? You know, he's like, he's like, whatever, Heather, let your freak flag fly, right? But then we did have like that Friday night was um, happy hour and all the authors were there or a lot of authors, the, you know, Teddy Hamilton was there, like a bunch of narrators. So that was super fun. So that was Friday night. And then Saturday night was, or Saturday was the signing. And so then they're like, oh yeah, I remember you or, you know, I don't know. It felt more personal. So I think when you go to a con, you're looking for like a keynote, you're looking for Mm -hmm. panels, you're also looking for built-in gathering times Mm -hmm. you are going to want to look so i know that we none of us none of us three attended steamy lake con but podcast uh listener gretchen did and Mm -hmm. they had a ball they had multiple Mm -hmm. panels throughout the three-day event um and there was like a cocktail hour the night before so there were there were lots of engaging community building social interaction time built in it wasn't just about the signing and I will tell you outside of that one author interaction that I had at Readers on the River I would go back again in a heartbeat like I will not even think twice because the people that were there too were there to build community like there was a whole group (laughs) or Jenny called them the ninja book people what they just like pop out of nowhere and like do you have this and like, what? yeah i'm like i do <laughs> they were all wearing <laughs> green shirts jenny's like i have a space bubble and you're in it <laughs> exactly <laughs> but they were so nice they were so nice but they just kind of came out of nowhere like do you have one of these and we're like no no i don't think so um <laughs> It was, but they were very nice people, but there was like fun little inside jokes Mm -hmm. throughout, like they were hiding unicorns and little rubber duckies and penis with sword ornaments throughout the hotel. That's awesome. See, I think book people are two kinds of people. Like you're either very extroverted and you are just out there and you just make friends with every single person that you come in contact with. And then there are the introverted people who are like, hi, you know, like whatever. And I went to the signings of Demi, who is uh, the best books, I think. I don't know. And she is so freaking extroverted. And I'm just like, um, hi, I'm just, I'm just over here. I'm going to go over here. I don't need to talk to anybody. That sounds remarkably <laughs> like Jenny and I. Yeah. <laughs> because Jenny lets me do all the talking. Mm-hmm. While she's just like, hey. But then once I make the introduction, then there's no t- there's no stopping her. Like, you should have seen her with Helena hunting. Oh, my God. I'm so jealous. I freaking she's love like, Helena. Hi. Well, I have some exciting news after we. I would have freaking passed out. <laughs> she was so nice. And she was. It's so <laughs> awkward. Exactly like you expect her to be. She was. And she just is so introverted too. That's, okay, I think so she takes her, her emotional support human also, who is Deborah Anastasia, her best friend, who's out there, right? And, yeah, Deborah is the and that was like uh, Aurora Rose Reynolds and Natasha Madison. Um, Natasha is out there, and Aurora is the um, is the introvert. It's so funny because if we look at it, although Susan Stoker extrovert, her PA. In, or not her PA, her friend, Amy, introvert. <laughs> she was happy just to take the pictures. You're just That's, there to you have, wrangle. <laughs> you, you have to have that, right? So like Demi, I'm like, hey girl, we're going to just, burp, we're going to back <laughs> off a little bit, you know? And you might have to rein back yeah. in. You need Mike to help do that because not one person can be responsible for that. He doesn't care. <laughs> Mike doesn't care if you give him enough bourbon. I am like... 
<laughs> it was okay because we met. She's a Sawyer Bennett reader. Her name is Marcy, and she is a delight. She is entertaining and fun. Mm -hmm. And really, I would go to a book conference with her again in a heartbeat because there is never a dull moment. It was so great. I, I, yeah, she was <laughs> messaging me while you guys were there. And I was like, who is? <laughs> you know, that, that sounds like her. She does not know a stranger. She is like the person to have. She is so fun. Um, but I do think Iowa is probably more a signing than a con. So, like, when you went to Iowa. I think Iowa, for me, it was North Iowa Book Bash. It was what you made it. So, like, it might have been a signing for other people, but it definitely, I met so many great people. Had but, dinner with authors. But, see, I think you also sit in a different position. So, for us, when we went to Columbus, there were not many of the authors we actually knew. Mm, I mean, yeah. we had read them, but we didn't know them. Mm -hmm. And I think that you sit in a position like what we do. You know, I walked into the Marriott. Carrie Ann Ryan is standing right there for Louisville, ready to give me a hug. Mm -hmm. Like there was no, like they know who we are because of the podcast. Or you were with Demi who had relationships with a lot right. of those authors. Right. So I think that changes an experience for people too. If they don't sit in our position... Yeah, I also think I would encourage people, if you do plan to meet an author, I think it's okay to message them. Like, I have really learned that reviews are amazing, and we should review books, and we should do that. But authors really like it if you send them a quick Instagram message, like, oh my god, I love this book. It's so great. I have had so many authors who respond to me, and they're like, I just wish you knew how much that meant, because... I don't actually know. I put this out into the world and I'm not sure people are going to love it. Yeah. So I think if you let them know, like, hey, I read your book and I'm so excited. I'm going to see you in whatever, you know. They're going to be on the they, lookout. Mm -hmm, they'll like that. Um, so one of the things that Jenny and I have gotten to do, but you haven't gotten to do yet, is bookstore signings. Mm -hmm. So um, we did a big one that was put on by a publisher. Uh, Bloom Books brought six, eight. That's yeah, uh, six. Let's see. Yeah, six Maybe. or eight. Six or eight authors, romance book authors, to a large bookstore in Dayton, and Jenny and I went, and it was chaos. The event. It, yes, it, it was very odd. It was from the beginning. It was oversold. Mm. We spent an hour and a half in line. Now, we spent an hour and a half in line to meet Kennedy Ryan. Would I stand another hour and a half in line to meet Kennedy Ryan again? A thousand percent. Yeah. She is a queen. She is amazing. She is so kind. Um, But that was only what? Was that only a three hour event? Four hour event? It was a four hour event with a lunch break. Yeah. So we spent two hours to see Kennedy Ryan. There was no way you could have gone and gotten another author's signature on a book. They're just it just couldn't have happened. Um cuz the lines were I mean I guess there were a couple of smaller authors but for the most part it wouldn't. So you had to buy tickets for that? Well, your ticket was the cost of the book. You had to pre-order the book you wanted signed. Okay. Um and then and you got a nice little swag pack when we got there, right? Like the swag was really yeah. nice. Um, I will say the Columbus event, we didn't get any swag uh, no. from the actual event for the price of your ticket. Like, there was no little welcome pack or nothing. Um, it was basically $45, $25, $45 for admission. And that was it. I think like, it was, yeah. So um, North Iowa, their little swag pack was very nice. I um, got a really cute... <laughs> Like nice reusable tote that you could pack bait. But did in. you have a general admission ticket for Iowa or did you have a VIP ticket for Iowa? I had a VIP and the VIP ticket was like $30. So the Columbus signing, we only had a general admission ticket. I want to mm. say it was $35 or $40. Yeah, that um, sounds right. And there was no swag for general admission. There was nothing. Yeah, they had like pens and stuff and then authors donated books 
which was really smart because then you their book was in your bag so you automatically went so like rl kenderson was there i had already pre-ordered books for them um but then a couple others had done that um also so obviously i went to their table and so we got swag for readers on the river and it came in this lug brand bag which when we signed in they, we were told that it's worth 150 dollars value yes Jenny and I are pretty basic bitches. I mean, let's just be really yeah. honest. We are not yep. name brand people. Uh-huh. Um, Jenny looked at the bag and was like, Becky, I'm fairly certain this is a diaper bag. <laughs> um, Amanda texts us and says, those are really nice bags. And we're like, huh. <laughs> we don't really travel. like So <laughs> for us, I mean, they're nice. It's a really nice, durable. It is not a canvas tote. It is a really well put together name brand bag. But within this bag was eight paperbacks and an audiobook, like CD yep. audiobook. Awesome. And then, then another also, swag pack. Yeah. Like it was awesome the amount of books and swag you got from your swag box. That is awesome. One of the things that I noticed that you don't have listed um, to talk about, and it's something that plays a huge major role in how I do book signings, and I'm not sure if it played a role in yours. I do a ton of pre-planning, like a ton. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that because we're going to get to also what we need. Um, So also bookstore signings. We went after we did the one in Dayton, our local Barnes and Noble that's between Jenny and I. Um, has been having indie authors come in for signings. Six to eight authors, and you stand in line, and the lines move very quickly, and it kind of is done in a U, and you can get every author's signature. You can bring in books, or you can buy the books there at the Barnes & Noble. You can bring in a bag to have signed, and they're free, other than the price of your books. That is awesome. I don't know if it's like where you guys live, if you just happen to have more authors out there. So or what? one of the assistant store managers is also an indie author and she got permission oh. from Barnes and Noble and they want to start hosting these events regionally. And mm. so she just reached out to her fellow author friends and was like, hey, who wants to come? And like we have one in October and we have another one in November and the one in November, we're going to do a live episode recording before the signing in store. It's going to be so fun. Um, Okay. So those are the different types of signings we've been to. I'm going to read real quick Rachel's and then we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. how to prepare for a signing. So this is all Mm -hmm. from Rachel. Um, Rachel's attended Indies, Indies Invade Philly. Um, She would absolutely attend this one again. It is super organized and doesn't try to get bigger than they can handle. The event space was good and lots of hotels nearby. Um, Love in Vegas. She says she would attend again, but probably only with a VIP ticket. The organizer is open to feedback and has made positive changes. So maybe general admission will get better. Um, And then... Wild and Windy, which is the Chicago signing, she would not attend again. Um, It is not well organized at all. They have sold too many tickets and did it again this year. They did not expand their their space, but they doubled the number of tickets they're selling. There is no way to see all the authors you want, even with a VIP ticket. If, and this is a big if, she said, if she went again, it would only be with a VIP ticket but now they're so expensive, it's probably not in her budget. Wild and Wendy also had super questionable responses to food allergy questions. And I have heard from somebody else that they had concerns about accessibility at Wild and Wendy. And the organizer never addressed the accessibility issues. So those are the thoughts from Rachel. So, um, I do know that, um, Love in Vegas is switching venues and with the switch in venues, I would a hundred percent go back. I just, the reason I would, it wasn't that I didn't like the convention space is the hotel. Yeah. I want to stay at the hotel that the convention's at and the hotel was not great. Yeah. Um, and I, 
so expectations of these signings, these events, any of this stuff. Um, we've talked about author interactions and attendee interactions. Um, so let's talk about how you plan. And one of the ways that you can plan is pre-orders. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was lucky. We drove to Louisville. Um, I did not pre-order to Columbus because really we were just trying to scout it out. That was like an educational, we've spent $45 on stupider shit. Let's go check this mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, ticket. And up until what? The day before we were like, do we want to go? Are we going to go? Were. Is this worth it? Um, but so we didn't pre-order for Columbus, but we did pre-order for Louisville. And so for me, it was easy because we drove. Uh -huh. But I didn't even think about pre-ordering till what was that, mid-July, Jenny? Yeah, I think when I was like, um, how many books is too many books? Right. There isn't a number. <laughs> well, we do not have a giant car. <laughs> I was like, I need some space back here. <laughs> Jenny needs to be able to sit in the back seat still. <laughs> and we drive a hybrid, so the trunk is not super spacious because there are batteries in the back so mm -hmm. um but we did find that i came home with 75 bucks um and jenny came home with three no no because you I had your carrie and ryan ones so I, I think i came home with yeah like eight eight so we can easily get 100 <laughs> books in our car and not take up too much space. So Iowa, I drove and I don't drive a hybrid. I drive a um, mid-sized mom. I drive an Explorer. Uh, so it was just Demi and I, and I brought my books in a, like a tote. Yeah. And I had it organized. Um, they sent you a map and then I color coded. Um, and then I had them in the tote. And then I also had a cart. For Vegas, I um, I think I it was flying with books. It's horrible because you don't want them to get like bent. I think I brought forty five, and I think I ended up bringing back like eighty five or something stupid. I ended up like shipping some books home. Um, from Iowa, I think I had like fifty five or something dumb like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, so we bought a tote. We did one of the wheeled carts with the tote mm -hmm. and that was really great. Mm -hmm. When you say Jenny, I mean, and we had, I, yeah. we had plenty of space for the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. I had my own tote. And then like some of the people at the convention, they either use like their reusable grocery bags or some people had backpacks or whatever. Um, people who didn't buy a ton of books. I also tried, I made myself a canvas, um, like on Canva, and then I printed it at Walgreens and I had that um, and people signed it and it was awesome. I loved it. I would 100% do that again. So we bought originally from Amazon to go to Columbus, but we don't think it, I don't think anyone signed it in Columbus, did they? No. But we used it in um, at the book signings. We bought a zipper pouch, and then we it came with a canvas tote. It was under twenty dollars. It's linked in, it's linked in the bookcase and coffee Amazon storefront. This canvas library looks like a library card, uh, bag and zipper tote. Super cute. Writes a sh with a sharpie. It writes really nice on it. Um, so we had those signed at the book signings in the bookstores. For Louisville, we bought. The library signing bag, because it's a little bigger, like it is like a book sleeve um, from Novel Grounds. Mm. And uh, it was under $20 a piece. I think they were 14 bucks a piece. Um, and it's really nice. So like you could easily do like readers on the river on one side and then turn it around and take it to your next um, right. signing on the other. Tons yeah, of space. So it was really I... well done. I got the idea from the canvas when I was in Vegas or somebody I was in line with and she was like, well, I'm like a poor college student. I don't have enough. I don't have a ton of money. She goes, but I also like move a ton. She goes, so who wants to move books? And I don't have anywhere to put books. 
So she goes, but I love these because I love to interact with uh, authors and readers. And so I thought, well, that's kind of a cool idea because, you know, not everyone, because realistically, the convention, like going to a book signing or a convention, even if it's local, costs money. And like, I think like, I want to go to a ton of conventions. <laughs> I would love to go to more, but air, fl- air like travel is so expensive and really unpredictable right now. And there's so many <laughs> that I want to go to. There is so many. Um, and that's something I was actually talking about with one of the authors with over the weekend. It's hard to pick mm-hmm. because there are so many. So a lot of authors are trying to pick different ones in different regions that they've never been to so that they can try to hit more of their reader base instead of just going to the same three or four spaces. Yeah, so I was sort of on the fence of which ones I really wanted to go to. So this summer, I was a major nerd. And I looked at a whole bunch of conventions, I picked out my top authors. And then I made a list. And then I did a checkbox of like, where they're going to be. And so then the signing where they were going to be the most seemed to me the most reasonable yeah. to go to. I also think time. So like you left early on a Friday morning and you were back on a Sunday because you could drive, right? So if you're in a spot where you can't drive or you have a job like my job where I can't just take days off work, it's mm-hmm. hard to do. Yeah. No, it is. And Jenny and I have tickets to Sweetgrass in Charleston, South Carolina in March, right? It's March, Jenny? Yes, March. And that we have heard that's put on by the holidays with the bells. And we've heard that those are definitely transactional. Um, and we've heard that from authors and attendees that there's not any extra events. It is simply the signing. And the tickets are based on um, like, you know, the VIP ticket gets you more time with the authors. So if you only have a general admission ticket, you have to be like very particular Elective. which yeah you're going to be very specific so you know that's something jenny and i'll debate but the draw for us to continue to consider that one that we have tickets for is because there's a bunch of our community that are attending that one so even if the signing is slightly like meh for us carrie and ryan is going to be there and then also our listeners um so Yeah. And I think like you guys live in Ohio. I live in Minnesota. So like I looked to drive to Kentucky. I think it was like 17 hours or something. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's, you You know, do that in a day because of, yeah. And because of where we live and because of where we live, they're pretty much East coast, South. Like Mm -hmm. we're not going to, we aren't going to go to any Texas signings, um, for multiple dudes reasons, but that's not one that we could drive in a four or five day weekend. Like it would have to be like a week long trip to go to Texas. Um, so right, like, go ahead. Chicago for me, I can get there. Like I can leave after work and I get there, you know, like six hours. It's not that long. No. Yeah. I mean, we can get to Chicago in what? Four, five, five, five hours to Chicago for us. It's not a big deal. Um, so Heather, do you feel Uh like you have overbought books at signings? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm having that problem right now. Like I'm looking at what I came home with and I'm thinking, huh, I have, I might've overdid it. Uh So I would say, and the other piece of this too is, if you don't care about meeting authors in person. So like for us, we have a very privileged position because we get to interview authors. We get to do IG lives. We get to do our happy hours. We can pretty much talk to any author we want, right? For the most part. Yeah. Um, And a lot of authors have books available for purchase off their websites signed. Um, So in the future... Uh, for a signing, I think I will be more, I will discriminate more as to who um, I'm buying pre-orders from. 
I think also decide uh, a series or something that you want from an author or um, if you like, I don't want to say the cover or, you know what I mean? Like it, it means something to you, that yeah. book is meaningful, then I think get that book. Now, I don't know, did Vegas have a limit per books per author? No, there was talk with like Sophie Lark or um, Sophie Lark was the big one. And then Jody Allen Malpas was was there. Um, was it JT Geisinger? I think her line was super long. Um, and this was like before Sarah Kate even blew up. So like I walked up to Sarah Kate with the whole, all of her whole book series and was like, will you sign this? And it was fine. So at Readers, they had a three book limit. You could only bring, or three item limit. So if you had a canvas or a bag, you could only have the author sign three things. I And then you had to get back my, into line again. I wrote on like um, Catherine Cowell, I think, and like, or Pavlov and some of the others that I thought would maybe have longer lines on their pre-orders. Like, feel free to sign this ahead of time. Like, yeah, and no. I didn't mind. I do want to give a special shout out to Lexi Blake because she simply became a queen for me over this weekend. First of all, we share birthdays. So amazing, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but Shayla Black was supposed to be at this signing and at the last minute had to cancel. And I had pre-ordered the Perfect Gentleman series from Lexi with the goal to get Shayla to sign it also. And so I asked Lexi, I said, would you mind pass it once you sign it? Would you mind passing it to Shayla so I could have Shayla's signature on this also? Just figuring she'd do it at the event, pass it from one table to the next, right? Well, Shayla canceled last minute. So Lexi arranged a lunch date with Shayla so that I could have the book signed by both of them. That's so nice. It was so nice. Right? So I have all five Perfect Gentleman books signed by both authors. Like, yay. Anyway. Um, Okay, so um, one of the other things that I um, I think people forget about is when you do do the pre-order, keep track of it, especially if you're going to a big one so you don't forget to go pick up books. Yeah, right. I think that's where it was very helpful to have two of us because um, Becky had her list and it was color coded. So she mm -hmm. stood in line and I went and got wristbands for the authors that were like she had we need to see these people like if they were wristbanded I could go pick up wristbands for both of us so why she was still in line yeah yeah but it wasn't until Thursday morning I believe I called you Jenny and I was like hmm I don't remember who all I pre-ordered from so then I had to sit down and make a list go through your PayPal and your Venmo <laughs> yeah pretty much yes don't tell um, so, okay. What item were you really glad that you had at a signing? Jenny, what item were you really oh glad you had? I don't know. Um, hand sanitizer. Wallet. wallet. Yes. <laughs> uh, um, My bag. Your bag. The wallet. Becky Be got sick of people, like, acknowledging my book bag. Jenny has a lounge fly. Yes. Disney book book bag leather that she wears. So it has like books on it, like oh, cutouts cute. and stuff. It's ador it's adorable. But it was either, oh my God, I love your hair. Or, oh my God, that book is that bag is fantastic. And I'm like, seriously, Jenny, knock it off. This is not about <laughs> you. <being> cool. <laughs> right. Um, Heather, what item were you really glad you had? My little rolling cart, like it's a, like a file drawer, like file bucket thing. I don't know. Yeah. And then it has wheels. And then looks like a milk crate. Handle. Looks yeah. like a milk crate on wheels. Mine had a cover. So then um, I had like a shoulder canvas bag, but honestly, I would do like a little tiny backpack thing with my wallet maybe, or I don't know. I had a crossbody bag that I carried. Um, it was longer. It was a Vera Bradley crossbody purse. Um, and because I had tons of buzzing swag that I was handing out. Mm -hmm. 
And that works great because my hands are free and I don't have weight on my shoulders. Although when we came home, I was looking for one of those smaller crossbody Lululemon belt bags. Belt bags. Yeah. So I had that, I think, in Iowa and I liked that a lot. Um, Yeah. They have like, I feel like authors have their own Sharpies and everything. One of the things I did do um, is I had um, business cards made up with my name and so people are like oh you're on bookstagram or whatever and so then it had like all like where you you know all that stuff yeah um and we handed out we made reader cards so that's something that our contributors will start to have at signings are these mini swag packs uh for them to start handing out at signings so if you see heather at a signing she will have stickers and these mini reader cards and stuff with buzzing information on it. Um, but you have to come up to me. I'm not going to come up to you right. because I'm I'm not that outgoing. You, well, and how would you know? They can see you. <laughs> you can't see them always. Right. right. Unless well, you're and at maybe, book club. <laughs> and <laughs> maybe Heather will wear a buzzing about romance t-shirt and that's how you'll find her. Maybe. Maybe. Um, what is one item that you brought that you did not really need? Okay, I'll just say it. Mike. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually needed my husband. Anyway. <laughs> I needed him I to carry Sharpies. the luggage. Sharpies. Yeah. Sharpies. Um, I'd bring them again just because <clears throat> I'd be afraid like they run out. What if I ran into like Natasha Madison? She didn't have one. I need her to sign yeah. something. I didn't. I, you know, I had some extra canvas tote bags and I didn't need them. We didn't need them. Um, I will say if you are flying or traveling um, to get your books home, gallons of black bags are very handy. So then you can wrap them up in your suitcase so nothing explodes on them. Also, a, or a roll of saran wrap around your books. Oh, yeah. So that was something else that had been suggested. Um, Bring snacks. Was like, oh, I was going to say, is there an item you wish ours. you had? Like some like cliff bars and water, you know, you're walking around, so like have a water bottle, like pain some reliever. Protein. Pain reliever. Yeah. We only had so many doses of Advil and we needed more. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're on your feet a lot. So I love to look cute just like anyone, but I would not wear cute, like I wear tennis shoes. Yeah. I wore tennis shoes and I saw the picture of us from Friday night's sparkler event at the signing, which was a champagne meet and greet. And I ha looked nice, except I have like my mom tennis shoes on my feet, but it was fine. It's fine. Um, okay. So I do want to say that buzzing about romance is going to be at the HEA reader event in Indianapolis, Indiana, November 3rd and 4th. Um, and there are still tickets available. You should absolutely check that out. It is a smaller, what I would call regional event. There are not really any, what you would say, headlining authors. I think they are all kind of mid-list. The big ones are mid-list um, indie authors. So um, uh, her name just went out. Britt Benson will be there. Ma Maggie Rawdon. Uh, Maria Lewis, uh, Allie Styles. You can say the name, Jenny. You don't have to just mouth it. <laughs> um, but Erin Nicholas will be there. So it's it's a little smaller. It's not huge. Um, and there's some fun, and we are going to have some community building events throughout the weekend, too. So be prepared. Prancing ponies. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I'm going to have to, like pre-game like rest up beforehand this time yeah uh yeah so is there any signing what heather i think too that's it like it's traveling is hard you're peopling a lot so if you are a person who doesn't like people a lot on a regular basis it wears you out you know that was me mike and i we haven't traveled in a very long time because pandemic and then before that you know our child was not well um so this was our first weekend away. We left the children at home. We haven't done that ever. Um, and it's taken two days and I'm still like, I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I, I barely made it like 
to the highway, I was passed out in the back seat, like most of the drag back. Yeah. She would wake up long enough to make a comment and lay back down. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny is a really helpful co-pilot, guys, just so we all know. <laughs> um, okay. Do you have any bucket list signings? Is there any signings that you really, 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 really hope that someday you get to go to? Heather, what do you got? Um, I romancing the Rockies. It's um, but it's not a bucket camp. list. You have a ticket. You're going. I know, but it is. It is a litter. I when I saw it, I was like, oh my god! It that Bamp has been on my family's bucket list, and so Justin, my husband, is like, well, it just gives us an excuse to go. So I mean, we'll see. You never know. Things change with sure the cost of everything. You just never yeah. know. Yeah, that's the one. It's up in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By Jasper National Park and Banff, and I, w- they do it very interesting. There's like an AM signing and a PM signing, but there's some really good um, Canadian names and Sawyer Bennett. Sawyer and Sawyer, Bennett. that's the only signing Sawyer's doing in 2024, mm-hmm. because Readers on the River is going to an every other year model, so mm-hmm. they will not be back until 2025. Um, Helena Hunting is Helena at that signing. Mm-hmm. She is a she is a delightful human. Um, and I can I have a secret about Helena and us. Ooh. We so we're group reading Shattered Truth in Discord yeah. and discussing it on nine twenty. Mm-hmm. That week we are going to have a Zoom with Miss Helena Hunting, and she is going to discuss with us the book. So the oh, information okay. of that will be coming here later this week. Uh, she is one of the sweetest humans. You know, she was one she of, really I think she was like our third book club author ever when we started all of this. And we did maple syrup shots with her. Like this human could not be any better. She's just genuine. She is so, well, she is not fake at all. No. And she is as awkward as you think she's going to be. Like <laughs> she at, is. We were in, she was in a panel at Readers on the River with Susan Stoker, Audrey, Audrey Carlin, Kristen Provey, Devney Perry, and C. Travis Rice. And there were absolute um, extroverts like Susan and Christopher Rice and um, Audrey Carlin. Like that was their panel. Um, and Helena, the, the um, moderator kept going to Helena first and she was like, um, I don't know. <laughs> I write books. <laughs> Susan's like, you know, just <laughs> it's so funny. So funny. Um, Jenny, do you have a bucket list signing? I don't think so. Cause like signings weren't like a realistic thing for me in the past. Like I had babies and then COVID and. Yeah. And now you have me. And so your bucket yeah. list is my bucket list. Correct. <laughs> um, I don't know that I have a bucket list, really. We're just going to go wherever the wind takes us. And as far as like buzzing about romance, having a signing, you know, we're just we're just going to have meet and greets and game nights. I think it's the best thing just to keep an open mind. Like, I think my favorite part of like I had I, I'm not going to lie, I had pretty low expectations for North Iowa, but it was so fun I had a blast they weren't a lot of authors that I knew but I met new authors and it was so much fun so I think keep your be open-minded yeah um we had a great time at Readers on the River like um Jillian and Liz otherwise known as Jizz um put on oh my god when I tell you that this is a whole thing First of all, I've never read J.R. Ward. This woman <laughs> is a freaking trip and she speaks my love language. She also travels with bodyguards who were some nice eye candy to look at. Also, C. Travis Rice, Christopher Rice, totally dropped trow on the board in front of everybody and pulled a dry erase board eraser out of his pants. That did not work. That did not work. And oh she referred God. to her ideas as like Rice Krispies popping in her pants when she <laughs> writes her books. 
Well, I feel like I might need to read Jailbird just because she yeah. sounds like a just like a riot. She is a character. Were, yeah, she is. She, and there were multiple times like she started talking, and I looked at Becky like, "Did you like hand her a script?" Like, <laughs> like the first statement out of her like mouth after she introduced herself and introduced Christopher, she was like, "Just so we're all clear, readers owe authors nothing. You owe me nothing." Mm. And I'm like. You speak to my love language. And then she went on to tell authors to stay the heck out of review spaces, that they're not for them. Review spaces are sacred and they are not for authors. And again, I was like, is she my best friend? <laughs> wow. She was, but she was a hostess. Like for this entire event, she was a hostess. Um, and I think that because the leadership was so warm and welcoming, it made all the other authors kind of kick up their game. So, like, I saw Kennedy Ryan walk in. We were at the cupcake and coffee and waiting for the second panel to start. And Kennedy Ryan came in and saw someone sitting by themselves at a table. And she grabbed a cupcake and had her water bottle and sa said, hey, is mm -hmm. this chair taken? And sat down and just chatted with the woman at the table. Like, there was no th them and us. I so, love that so much. Yeah, but that's how this that's how this signing was. It was community. The authors went to the after party. We didn't go to the after party. Um, some of us were drunk in the lobby. <laughs> Looking at you, Jenny. Hey, I I was pretty good. <laughs> there was this cake. This butter cake. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So guess what time it is, guys? It is time for Book, book. of oh. the Week. Okay, it's Book of the Week time. Mm -hmm. Jenny, we'll start with you. What's your Book of the Week? Um, What Saves Us by Maggie Gates. It's her third book in the Fall Creek series and the last one. But she definitely left some doors open. Um. But it's really good. Um, single mom, you like you see her from the second she becomes like a baby is birthed on the page. Um, and former military um, paramedic that is dealing with his own issues. But he is like such a great guy. So swoony. So swoony. Um, that book, so emotional. Um, absolutely read the author's content trigger yes. warning, but it is a book as a mom who didn't necessarily take naturally to motherhood felt seen. Correct. I, I would say the same. Yes. Like it definitely has an accurate portrayal of like the hard side of mom being a mom. Yeah. Shane is our hero and God, he just so when we say that your love like a love language is the little things, those small caring moments, it's not just one big grand thing. It's all the tiny little things they do. So his love language is absolute act of service. And he just gives. But in a way that's not like condescending or overtaking or trying to do for her right. he's just trying to keep her in the moment yeah i would say that's like his respect for her especially for her and her child and their relationship amazing i i'm getting teary now like i cried <laughs> through this book this book was so good it was it, yeah so good but i would definitely recommend reading in order. Um, yes. And also Maggie Gates is going to be at the HEA Readers event in Indianapolis. So, and book two in this series was one of my book boyfriends in the I Licked Him First book boyfriend series. So. That's a good call. Yeah. Shane, could, well, not Shane, uh, Austin. Austin. Austin was a pretty swoony hero himself. So. Um, okay, Heather, what's your book of the week? Um, it is Codename Libra by Janie, Janie Crouch. It is in the Liner, or Zodiac Tactical series. I think it is book three in the series. Um, I'm listening to it on audio. 
Um, it's Landon Black and Bethany. So Bethany is a baker and she comes from like the super rich family and Landon goes undercover. She's a like I I don't want to say plus size. She's just like a size 10, but like she, her, yeah, her family, you know, whatever. And uh it's a fake relationship and it's just all my favorite things. And it's this series is really great and I love Janie Crouch. She's a fantastic author. So okay. great book. Um, so my book of the week is The Hunt in Illusion by M. L. Philpit. This is a mafia Cinderella retelling. It takes place in uh no, it takes place in Quebec, Canada. Um, so it's very, very interesting. She is the enemy of the hero. Like her fa- her stepfather is. So instead of having an evil stepmother, she has an evil stepfather. And the stepfather is the enemy of the hero. Um, and he has been told it is time to get married, to carry on the family legacy, and has a ball, has a gathering, and she is sent undercover by her stepfather to the ball uh, to get information about the family because they're kind of, you know, enemies. They're enemies. It was so well written. And the fairy tale referencing was so well done, but not in a way that felt kitschy. Uh, Like I had read The Beast of Bishop Landing, which is um, Amelia Wilde's uh, it's a beauty and the beast retelling and that one was like very kitschy like the housekeeper's name was mrs potts and her son's name was chip like it was just so overdone the references um in this book it was not and it was modernized in a way that it makes sense and it works and i'm engaged and i'm obsessed with this series and I like immediately started book two and had no business starting book two. And book two is a Cinder- uh, Sleeping Beauty retelling. Um, but this is a series I will be binging. It's in Kindle Unlimited. And like I said, you guys, if you like dark romance and you like mafia, you absolutely should be checking M- ML Philpit out. So she's one of those mafia authors we don't, we don't hear anything about. But this series is so good. Like... I'm a little obsessed and I'm interested to have Jenny read it because they're like, especially in book one, there is not a power dynamic. Like you think there should be, Um, but there is some on page violence, but it's worth it. The Uh, the violence doesn't bother me. (laughs) Well, she runs from him. So there's a little bit of primal kink uh, because she betrays him and then runs. Um, So, Lots of, lots of good stuff. Um, yeah, I really liked that book. Anyway, uh, Patreon update. Celebrating one year in the hive is Sue T. Um, thank you for supporting the podcast for the last year. Uh, without amazing Patreons like Sue, we would not be able to bring you three episodes a week. Um, you will be getting your one year anniversary sticker in your next swag pack. FYI. Um, Swag Packs headed out last week, and I'm so excited that we had sponsoring authors Kelly Elliott, Helena Hunting, Melanie Moreland, and Renee Rose as our sponsoring authors this month. Um, Here are a couple first in series or favorite books by them where if you haven't read them, I think you should check them out. For Kelly Elliott, I have her Meet Me in Montana, Never Enough. It is uh, a cowboy small town romance. Helena Hunting, I picked a middle of the series book. And I picked the first book in the same series. Um, so I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I absolutely would read this book because it's like my favorite, but I think so, Jenny, what book of Helena's were you gonna suggest? A lie for a lie. So I think that the hero in that book is very hard to like. He's kind of a dick. And so if you've never read Helena and you read that book, you might think, oh, my God, does she only know how to write an asshole? Because he's an asshole. 
but I I think this is like a good balance between her um pup series and then her lies hearts and truth series yeah well in her um her clipped wing series is also very angsty but then she definitely has more rom com and women's fiction titles out there with her trad pub stuff, like her Shacking Up series and her uh, the Sister series and then the Lake. There's a Lake series, too. But mm-hmm. I picked a favor for a favor uh, because Stevie and Bishop, Olives and Pineapple. You don't understand, Heather. We were at Helena's sweat line getting our book signed and she had swag mm-hmm. and I'm like grabbing all everything i can i think i would arm wrestle and tackle someone for bishop yeah he is my favorite favorite and the um the little lies series um you get i love how we get snippets of her past it's just chef's kiss um, Melanie Moreland, I suggested Rev to the Max, which is a small town ca- Canadian romance, one night stand co workers. Um, she's so great. Just read Melanie because yeah. she's yeah. a freaking riot. Um, she is. And we will have just spent book club with her when this episode drops. So another night. Nobody even needs to shout for book club because <laughs> Melanie can do book club on her own. She, and she wouldn't even. She's so awesome. <laughs> she is. Um, and then Renee Rose. I've only read her mafia stuff. So the director, which is book one in the Chicago Bratva series, her mafia is definitely more gray than dark. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that several people love her PNR stuff. Yeah, her PNR stuff is great. I loved the Chicago Bratva series. It's great. Yeah. Um, swag packs go out to fancy drinks, cold brew, and queen bee tears, and we still have fun buzzing about romance, exclusive stickers, mood reader cards, and other fun things. These are mailed monthly. These are going to go out on the 10th of the month. We do ship these internationally. We've made a slight change to these. I am only shipping these once a month. So if you join on the 20th of the month, you will not get your first swag pack until the 10th of the following month. So if you join on September 20th, you will not get your next, you will not get your first swag pack until October 10th. Keeping track of who got swag packs when and life and time, um, it is just easier for me to do them all in a batch. Um, Especially if I can get the shipping correct. Um, Also, Jenny, you didn't take yours when you were here this weekend. So I had to mail it to you. Mm-hmm. sorry it's fine whatever um because of our amazing patreons we're able to bring you three episodes a week and we're still working on our goal of 75 members so we can have our first ever book retreat all members of patreon get exclusive episodes along with perks like buzzing book club um and i just announced our october uh book we are reading rough which is part of the wolf ranch series by vanessa vale and renee rose um and renee rose is tentative to join us so that's some fun stuff and you can find a list of all of our events at bookcaseandcoffee.com slash events including happy hours ig lives and book club and we're adding in if you're part of patreon we're adding back in book chats monthly and we have a bunch of group reads happening in discord so make sure you are subscribed to our newsletter and checking out that event page pretty often because when i tell you i have all the events happening this fall i have all the events happening this fall it is going to be a busy fall um mm-hmm. anyway thanks guys for talking about signings uh anytime um until next time everyone happy reading find us on instagram at buzzing about romance or on twitter at buzzing romance If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 